I'm Matt Willis, Public Health Officer from Marin County with an H5N1 status update for May 10th. I'm going to share what I look at first in tracking H5N1 and then share a scenario I'm concerned about for our community. As a health officer, the first piece of data I look for is always whether or not there have been any additional human cases anywhere in the world. Because soon as we see any evidence of a spike in human transition or an outbreak anywhere in the world, it's a signal that the virus may have changed and gained the ability to more easily infect humans or spread between humans. So right off the bat, we're reassured that as of May 10th, we haven't seen any new human cases in the past few weeks. And that's a sign the virus still isn't very good at infecting humans or spreading between us. Knowing this allows us to step back and focus on building monitoring systems and understanding how H5N1 is flowing between the animals around us. With that in mind, here's how I think about it. Right now, there are three animal groups that we're most interested in, wild birds, poultry, and livestock. There's also a long list of other wild mammals that can carry the virus, but those three are the most concerning for spillover into humans. Each of these groups differ in susceptibility to infection and general severity of illness. The interplay between these groups and human population is complex, not fully understood, and changes as the virus evolves. To add complexity, these animal groups also differ in the agencies that monitor and respond to outbreaks and infections. So it's a complex ecosystem, both biologically and administratively. But within that complexity, there's one scenario that stands out in my mind as a potential fastest route to multiple cases of H5N1 in our community potentially today. And that's this. Imagine an infected wild bird, maybe a migratory goose or one of the dozens of bird types that can carry the virus, lands in a local pasture with dairy cattle and infects a dairy cow. That infected cow can contribute milk with virus in it to the local milk supply. Let's say it happens to be a farm that supplies raw milk to the market. That is, the milk is not pasteurized. So now we're potentially furnishing live virus directly to the public for consumption. The scenario is not so far-fetched. Marin is one of seven counties among California's 58 counties that has seen both H5N1 in wild birds and in local poultry. And our region has dairy farms that supply raw milk to grocery stores. This milk is not routinely tested for H5N1 yet. Again, there have been no cases among local livestock, including dairy cows, but testing of cows is limited, and it's very hard to control that interface between cows and wild birds, who obviously fly in and out. It's important to note that we don't know a lot about what happens when people drink milk contaminated with H5N1 virus. The usual mode of transmission for flu is, as you know, through the air between people, which explains why seasonal flu spreads quickly and why respiratory symptoms are so prominent. We're confident H5N1 isn't good at spreading that way between people yet, so I'm not concerned that we'll have a large surge in cases. But taking the virus in through our gut is probably not benign, especially given that raw milk is sometimes given to infants whose immune systems are still maturing. It's also notable that on the Texas dairy farm that had the recent H5N1 outbreak, several cats died, and the investigation found that it was likely from drinking milk from infected cows. So for our community, we need to be clear, when the CDC says, quote, the commercial milk supply is safe, they're referring to pasteurized milk. Pasteurization is a process that heats milk to high temperatures to kill germs, including bacteria that can make their way into raw milk and viruses like H5N1. We're looking to the USDA and other agencies to accelerate testing along the chain of raw milk production and distribution and, uh, and sale. It's an important blind spot to fill. We'll feel more secure when we know the supply is being properly tested. In the meantime, it's important to stick to pasteurized milk. Our team will continue to provide updates as the situation with H5N1 changes and as we learn more. Please stay connected and thank you for doing your part.